Hello and welcome back to Olotita. Welcome back to Wholeness. Today in our asana series, we're going to be moving along from Surya Namaskar A and B to begin adding some standing postures to your practice. So at this point, hopefully you've been working on your Surya Namaskar A, practicing five of those each day, and hopefully added in three to five Surya Namaskar B, Sun Salutation B. Once we finish those warm-up asanas in our practice, we can begin with the standing sequence. And it begins with Padangushtasana, or thumb to big toe posture. This is the first of two basic forward folding postures that we do in this practice. You want to really connect to how you're moving your body in space. So we're gonna begin small conversations about body mechanics and understanding proprioception or where you are holding your body in space. And these are all postures that you can use every day to practice getting to know your body more intimately, but also getting to know your environment and where you are proprioceptively in space. It's one of the really cool benefits of any yoga postures, actually. In addition to that, if we really bring this kind of mindfulness to our movement, understanding body mechanics, then we can take the body very consciously in each movement through space in a dynamic way that is going to give us more flexibility and endurance and strength and stamina and balance and agility, but it's going to do it safely. And it really will have a compounding effect on the body because it's going to help over time to really bring you back into a state of balance if you have any areas of imbalance in the body. So let's get started. We will practice both a modified version and the full expression of this posture. But remember this series is to break it all down for you. So it's not about us getting through the whole primary series in your hour, hour and a half that you have allotted, but about really going back into the practice that you've created or starting from the very beginning and creating a foundation that is so strong. Every pose that comes after comes after very safely and the foundation just continues to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And so does your body. And so does your ability to connect to your breath and your bandhas with the movement through space and all the other things that this practice really asks and demands of you. If you want to take it seriously in that home-based daily self-practice that you seek. So with that in mind, it doesn't matter if today or every day you have to bend your knees. This is a place to start to create a very solid foundation. So never try to look at people around you or think that, oh, I'm going to try to go do the advanced version when you're not ready. Go when you're ready. And remember that the teacher relationship is always really helpful part of that process to know when you're ready. Uh, but do the best that you can being mindful of what you're activating and what you're engaging maintaining that stability and postural alignment. Padangushtasana, or thumb to big toe posture. We always work on extending from the hips. So we wanna take our feet hip distance apart, your feet are parallel, and instead of rounding your back to fold forward, your arms are by your side, but I want you to hinge from the hips. So start to press down and out through your feet. That should turn on the quadriceps. And then slight bend in your knees, start to hinge forward over your hips, keeping your back flat. All the while, keep your eyes forward and reach down to grab your toes. And it's quite all right if you need to bend your knees for right now because your flexibility isn't there. So maintain that bent knee or your straight legs if you have it and grabbing your big toes with your thumb, index and middle finger grip around your toes and really look forward. So this is a pause point, but I want you to connect to the extension that you're creating from your sacrum, your coccyx, all the way towards the crown of your head. You're trying to press your hips backwards and your tailbone backwards and the crown of your head forward. And the magic in this pose is really from here, we're not pulling so hard or so much with the upper body, asking the arms, shoulders, lats to do the work. Instead, Connect to the groundedness through your feet, push down through your feet, lift your hips up, and then just let your torso tilt forward. 
So if you notice, I never drop my head because I'm actively engaging my back neck muscles all the time. And I'm just tractioning my head towards the floor. And if you do this, you will never overstretch your hamstrings. You're also going to really maintain the connection from your feet all the way up through your spine. And once you've gotten to a point where your flexibility has really increased and you're really in more of a forward bend, then you can begin to really engage your lats and pull your shoulders together to create an oppositional force for the head that you're trying to traction towards the floor. So as you squeeze your shoulders back and you gently pull the toes forward with your fingers and you traction your head towards the floor by pulling your neck and then work on pressing your tailbone up as you push your feet down. Then we've got a lot of different oppositions of force here to help us create dynamic stability, flexibility, strength, and more. So whatever position you're going to take today, be mindful of your alignment and movement through space. After Padangustasana, we move right into Padahastasana, or hand-to-foot posture. You'll notice that we quickly transition from Padangustasana to Padahastasana with just two breaths. So they come in unison in a sequence, a vinyasa sequence, which we'll get into a lot more later. So don't worry about that if you're like, what is she talking about? But it's a flowing part of this breath with movement practice. And we couple these two poses together. So once you're finished with your fifth breath in Padangustasana, I'll have you inhale to lengthen your spine and just look forward. And on the exhale, you transition into Padahastasana by placing your hands underneath your feet from the front. And then we work on this posture. These are both not only transitions from your sun salutations and helping to relieve any tension you might have found in your hands or your wrists from those sun salutations, but they're the gateways into the rest of the standing sequence. So they're really important to create the foundation with which you're going to practice the rest of your asana series. What do I mean by that? It's not just about doing the postures correctly. It's about how you're aligning your body or stacking your weight in space, not only to be as efficient as possible, but safe and make sure that you can do this yoga for a really long time. On top of that, the breath is so powerful. And so as you slowly work with these movements and these breath sequences, you begin to go so much deeper into this world of yoga practice. It's about maintaining the dynamic way you're moving and stacking your weight in space with this breath. That's where the magic is because you can stretch all day long and it's just stretching. But if you add this dynamic breath with it, you add focused ways in which you breathe and how you move, this yoga is really powerful. So as we move into these poses in a moment, I want you to be mindful. Don't just pull your head or drop your head. Where are you lifting and lengthening through your spine? That's the question you want to ask yourself today. So now we begin with your time to practice Padangustasana. From Samastitihi, with your feet together and your arms by your side, standing nice and tall at the top of your mat. Arms stay by your side, inhale, step your feet hip distance apart, keeping your gaze forward, hinge from the hips, folding forward, grab your big toes with your peace fingers and thumbs and look forward. If your knees are bent, that's okay. On your exhale, start to slowly push the feet down, press the tailbone up, pulling the head towards the floor to traction your neck. Begin to gently engage your back muscles. So you're kind of squeezing those shoulder blades together as you pull your head to the floor, opposition one. Pushing down and out through your feet as you press up through your tailbone, opposition two. Work on your breath, slow, deep inhales and exhales from your throat through your nose. And you're looking down the tip of your nose, now Sagrai Dresti. At the end of your fifth breath, Inhale, look for and lengthen your spine. Pada Hastasana. Keep your stance forward, gazing forward as you slide your hands underneath your feet from the front. Inhale, look forward again. Exhale and fold. So if your flexibility is not quite where you want it, you might need to bend your knees as you take this pose. That's okay. 
Practice, practice, practice. All is coming. So as you bend those knees, just keep pushing down through your feet to press into your hands. Push your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Try not to pinch through your shoulders. Just try to traction your neck and let your shoulders soften here. At the end of your fifth exhale, you're gonna inhale to lengthen your spine, lift your head, look forward. Exhale, just place your hands on the floor in front of you, really ground through your feet. On your inhale, lift the body up to stand nice and slow, and exhale back to Samasthiti. You did such a great job today. I'm really proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself too. Every day that you get on your mat is a day that you tell yourself, I deserve to be healthy and happy. It's a chance for you to give a little time, spend a little time with yourself. The body will thank you and the mind will thank you too. It's a gift that not only you give to yourself, but you give to everyone else as well. Because when we do take care of ourselves, we're better able to take care of others. I thank you so much for taking this time with me and for you today. And I very much look forward to seeing you right here next week for our very next awesome video. Namaste.